Hi everybody, this is Anne. When we think of how to decorate our pottery, we have a tendency to look for exotic glaze recipes, expensive underglazes, or complicated firing tricks. In this video, I'm going to show you an elegant way to decorate your pottery using something we all have an abundance of already in our studios. One resource we callously discard into buckets or trash cans. Of course I'm talking about slip. I'm going to demonstrate three surface designs that with just a little bit of preparation and practice, anyone can do. Let's get started. First I prepare the slip. I only needed about a half to three quarters cups of clay scraps for this project. Usually right out of the reclaim bucket, the clay is too thick or lumpy for slip trailing. I conservatively added water to the clay and stirred it until it began to dissolve. The water will help thin this down, but to get the bigger chunks dissolved, I poured the mixture into a little tea strainer while gently pushing it through. The clay was still too thick, so I added a little more water and sieved it again. The goal is to create a slip that's very smooth and about the consistency of pancake batter. Once I was satisfied with that, I needed something to pipe it through. I had a cake decorating bottle with an icing tip on the end that I thought would work. I poured the slip into a funnel and pushed it into the bottle. I like the bottle to be as full as I can get it to eliminate any air pockets while I'm piping it through. Next I tested the flow of the slip. The clay will usually come out either in strings, meaning it's too thick, puddles, indicating the clay's too watered down, or as round puffy dots, which is what I'm after. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Now on to the first design. I threw a cup and let it dry to leather hard. I began by drawing lines around the rim and the foot, then randomly began to section off the center of the mug using pairs of undulating lines in various directions, making sure they crisscrossed each other all the way around the body. I took a dressmaker's tracing wheel and rolled it down each line. I like how that tool creates uniform indented line trails, which will complement the trailing slip dots. I did have a little problem getting those lines underneath the handle. I had to carve those in by hand. Even though the lines around the mug are random, the tracing wheel lines add an evenness and almost quilted appearance to the surface. Now for the slip dots. I usually like to work with the cup surface flat on my lap to avoid gravity making the dots droop, but for the video, I'll try this on the banding wheel. For the wider parts of the trails, I squeeze the bottle a little harder to extrude bigger dots. And in the narrower parts of the trails, I use slight squeezing for the little dots. Remember you want the dots round and puffy, not pointy and sharp on top. If they are sharp, when it dries, you can wet your finger and rub it over the top to slake it down and soften it. I didn't forget the handle. I did just a small row right down the center. Here it is, all finished. It looks like it's been sewn and pearl buttons have been added like on a wedding dress. Here's one I made earlier where I continued with the references to sewing and took a dart out of the mug body as well as having the stitch marks and the buttons. I could have glazed this all white to keep with the formal wedding theme, but as an experiment I glazed it with a smoke celadon for more of an informal studded leather jacket feel. Let's experiment with dimension by combining recessed carving with the low relief of the slip trailing. I again started with random crisscrossed lines, this time turning them into blades of grass and adding little seed heads to them. 
When I was happy with that, I used a fine-tipped diamond core tool to carve each of those lines. You can use whatever tool you have handy, such as a needle tool or even a bamboo stick. I then carved extra detail lines into each of the blades of grass and through the seed heads. Now onto the slip trailing. To help with the slip trail placement, I use sticky backed vinyl to cut out a flower stencil, but you can use simple paper if you don't have the vinyl. I cut out a small piece of the vinyl and traced a Gatorade cap onto the paper backing. I undulated the line so it looked like a flower, then cut it out. I folded it into quarters. I then marked a pencil dot in the very center and marked two more dots on either side of the center along each of the creases. Using a small hole punch, I punched out each of the pencil marks. I peeled off the backing, then placed the stencil along the surface in a random spot. It's alright if the stencil overlaps part of your carving. I traced the outline of the stencil and marked each dot with a pencil. I continued that pattern around the mug, staggering the stencil placement. Following those pencil lines, I slip trailed around each flower shape, then slip dotted the inside. Now here's what I came up with. I love the texture of that where you can feel recessed areas along with the raised bumpy areas. That's a nice variety. Here's one I made earlier with more of the slip trailing along the surface of the flowers to create an even more petally look. Here it is all glazed. I debated about which color glaze to use and landed on this icy turquoise. I thought a more bold color might distract from the busy texture. Finally, I wanted to experiment with a form other than a cup or a mug, so I decided on a bulbous pot. I divided the space by using a tape measure to make one inch segments horizontally and a trimming spinner and my laser level for the 16 vertical lines. I began making bigger slip dots on the center horizontal line, then smaller dots north and south to come up with a basic design. From there, I did this variation where I connected the dots with diagonal lines, then added swags of dots along those lines for this really cool look. And here it is all glazed and fired. I used Celadon Ice Blue so there'd be a hint of color to break around the dots. The color adds just enough interest for you to look at the design without being too overpowering. These designs may look complicated, but when you break it down, they're all simple lines and dots with no drawing skill required. I hope you're inspired to give this a try. Thanks to the newest members of our Little Street Pottery Research Facility team. If you'd like to join the team and earn a title, click on the Super Thanks button or the link to buy me a coffee. It also really helps us out if you hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. See you next time in the studio.